this episode, our virtual bus tour visits the Mossman Daintree region. With World Heritage Rainforest in its hinterland and the Great Barrier Reef tourism hub of Port Douglas next door, Mossman is one of Queensland's most environmentally sensitive cane growing regions. The historic Bri Bri Plantation is one of Mossman's original cane farms and it's been home to the Watson family since the 1890s. Current owner Drew is checking the impact of a 500 millimetre downpour. The flood's been right through here, silt all over the cane. It looks like it's going to be all right. Uh, it's got a nice layer of silt all over it, but um, it'll probably start to sucker a little bit, but uh, it'll be all right. It's been quite a big flood. We've had three big floods this year. With well-maintained grassy headlands and a strong vegetation barrier alongside the Mossman River, Bri Bri is well prepared. Years of planting work mean that today, tall stands of timber again cover sections of riverbank that were cleared in the early years to fuel boilers at the Mossman Mill. Well, this area here was always just a grassed out area that was uh, harbourage for rats and one thing or another, so um, we decided to plant some rainforest trees through here. So, um, and it's done a pretty good job. It's uh, shaded out the grass. Uh, this is a red cedar here, uh, red cedar, there's white cedar, some Kwangdong, I think there's even some uh, Queensland maple. So having tree, good tree line along there, it uh, protects the riverbank quite nicely. Any, if we do have any nutrient uh, outflows, you know, all the roots and things, they, they do a great job of capturing all that before it gets into the river. So hopefully that's sort of like a bit of a silt trap or nutrient trap of any description. So hopefully if there is any side movement, underground movement of, of uh, fertiliser, Hopefully these tree roots will grab that before it gets into the river. This is one of Drew's favourite barra fishing spots on the farm. A few days after the big wet, the river is clearing up quickly. Yeah, we've only had a few days and it's just about, just about crystal clean again. We've had some riverbank erosion, some huge floods come down here. We've had a little bit of riverbank erosion, but uh, I see very little, well, I don't see any silt coming out of fields. The trash blanket has stopped any, any uh, soil erosion out of, out of the fields. Quite satisfying. With 1,500 acres under cane between Port Douglas and Daintree, the Watsons are experts in managing farms in high rainfall areas. Up here, getting water away from paddocks quickly and ensuring nutrients don't drain away with it is one of the secrets to successful farming. March has had sort of 13, bit over 1,300 mils of rain for the uh, for the month. Uh, People talk about old wet seasons and that's sort of what it felt like but uh, it's amazing how quickly it does get away. It's sort of even up in our daintry farm it's back in within the confines of the drains and, uh, and the drains are just about all dry on this farm. Uh, on, the, on the southern farm well they're long gone so you know you can get around the headlands again no trouble at all. Today Drew is hosting local Smart Cane BMP facilitator Rebecca Stone who's an extension agronomist with Mossman Agricultural Services. She's here to discuss his whole of farm nutrient management plan. Smart Cane BMP is the industry's best management practice program and Drew is accredited in the three core modules which includes soil health and nutrient management. Over the page here we've got your nutrient requirements, a summary of all your soil samples for the last five years. Uh, this one here is looking at your plant cane requirements. Yep. The plans are one element of a best practice farming system. It's all about a scientific approach to determining what nutrients are needed on each block. So the process with the whole of farm nutrient management plans is really looking at a grower's soil samples across all their farms, all their blocks that they've done soil samples on for the last five years. It's getting a really good picture of all those soil samples, um, looking at them against their soil maps bringing them back to their soil, uh, soil types and looking at the different rates of nitrogen needed on those different farms, phosphorus, potassium, all those sort of core nutrients, being able to nut down exactly what they need on each of those farms. The plans draw upon the six easy steps approach to nutrient management, only giving a crop the nutrient it needs yep and reducing the risk of fertilisers containing nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus being lost into the wider environment. 
The timing of fertiliser application is also important, especially for growers in coastal areas on the fringe of the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. So in terms of the environmental benefits, we don't want to be putting on excess nitrogen that's going to be lost to volatilisation or leaching, especially in this part of the world, in the wet tropics. We've just recently had a huge, a huge downpour just over the last weekend where if there was excess nitrogen being put on in some cases, that's where those losses could occur. So with these sorts of plans, you know, you're thinking about those types of things, you know, we're looking at the oncoming wet season, what the forecast is, that sort of thing. Putting on the right amount of nitrogen at the right time is, is so important um, for, yeah, the environmental benefits. And looking at these uh, nutrient management plans, we can really do that, really able to get the exact amount that they need on. Denitrification in this wet environment is yeah, really important, something we have to watch for all the time. Obviously, as is leaching, we use a stool splitter. We try to hill up reasonably high on the stool and, and put the fertiliser on top of that stool, uh, or, uh, yeah, within the centre bus down the top of that hilled up stool so that uh, hopefully we don't get too much leaching and uh, not the denitrification either. Best practice nutrition management ties in directly with best practice drainage management. Drew uses a GPS scoop, a shared resource among Mossman cane growers to improve the fall on his blocks by cutting and filling. Getting water away quickly reduces the potential for waterlogging and nutrient loss. There's an old Tully saying, no drain, no cane. Apart from the fact we have to have the, maintain our drains, within the fields too, we, we, I've done a lot of, well in the early days we call it laser levelling. Since then that little scoop has had, it, uh, had a, uh, a GPS put on it, so it's now a GPS scoop. That's been a godsend as far as taking the lumps and bumps out of the paddocks, getting that infield drainage so that uh, we don't get that water logging in, inside the fields. Doing the right thing by the environment means doing the right thing for a farmer's bottom line. Not using excess nutrients and keeping it on the farm means greater productivity. I still say the main reason we have a nutrient management plan is for um, controlling costs on the farm. There's no point putting extra fertiliser on if you're not going to make a return from that. People don't want fertiliser going off the farm to um, you know, impact the waterways. My main problem is if I'm paying for fertiliser, I don't want it move. I don't want it going anywhere but into that plant. Time is also precious, and Drew certainly doesn't want to be tied down with paperwork when he could be on the farm. Working with his local agronomist, achieving best practice in nutrient management, is not so hard after all. That's the bit I really like. It's very simple. The, the, the maps are all there. They're actually coloured in. They have a code on what colour is, is what blend. I have a new set of maps sitting in the, in the tractor, the fertiliser tractor. He just looks at that and as he, as he goes through, he can quite easily see what blend goes onto that paddock. He can, and while he's on that particular bend, blend, he can actually go to those different paddocks and do them and make that easy too before he changes over. And then he just colours in the, we've got marking pens in the tractor and he just colours in the farm map as he does it and writes a date beside it when it was done. So very easy to keep the records. Focusing firmly on the industry's future, Rebecca looks forward to helping more Mossman District growers with nutrient planning and in achieving Smart Cane BMP accreditation. Getting the message out on what farmers like Drew Watson are doing and the improvements they're continuing to make to grow better cane and look after the environment. There are multiple benefits of becoming Smart Cane accredited. Looking at those from a whole of farm perspective, taking into account yeah, your nutrient management, weed management, pest, disease, drainage. Just looking at everything, taking a step back and really placing those things in terms of yeah, where you can increase your productivity is so crucial to having yeah, a really good look at the whole picture of your farm. We're creating a really good picture for cane farmers in particular, that they are doing all the right things in place, positive impacts looking towards the future. I think there is really positive outcomes coming out of Smart Cane in particular. Yeah.